welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now in today's video we're going to take a look at the United States chart. This is a request by one of my favorite viewers so finally I managed to get around to it. I'm not going to go way too in depth. I'm going to keep this quite simple and quite high level. Um, and if you know perhaps we get into a good discussion in the comments below I can we can explore this further. We can explore the chart further. We can look at um, you know, how suitable a chart is this for the United States. I was looking at that today and I had quite a few thoughts come up, but I thought, let's just keep it really simple. Let's just keep it really high level. What do the next few years have in store? That's what the question was originally. So yeah, I thought I'd take a look. I thought I'd take a look at the transits and see what's going on. So. On my system and what I'll do is I'll put diagrams up here as I go along so you can see what I see. Um, I wanted to see when was the last time that Pluto was in this neighborhood of crossing over from Sagittarius to Capricorn and it's really interesting. The last time he was here was 1772 and if I click up, whoops, 17, I've got Feb 1772 here I click up a bit and yeah, April 1772, 72, 73, that kind of time. It's really interesting. The date that I've got here for the chart is United States of America, July 4th, 1776. So Pluto was last here, just before the birth of the United States as a Western nation, you know, that... Um, it's not the birth of the United States, come on. I mean, there were people living there for thousands and thousands of years, just like Australia. You know, we had the Aborigines here for 40,000 years. And then the white settlers came and they created Australia, right? Same deal with the United States. You had the white settlers turn up and create the United States of America. So it's really interesting that Pluto, the Pluto natal return that is happening here for the United States. Pluto is coming up to, to meet natal Pluto, right? So let's take a look at this. Let's scoot up in the years. I'm going to click up. I'm going to change the diagram on my side so you can see what I'm seeing. And I'm going to come back up to 2020. What have we got here? 2022, that's too far. Let's go back to 2020. Let's make it uh, August 19th. So 17th, that's good enough. Um, so we've got Pluto just about to enter from Sagittarius into Capricorn, about to meet natal Pluto. So what happens when we've got a planetary return? What's going on in that process? Well, I know from my Saturn return, having experienced it personally, and I remember it was tough. And that was actually the period of time that really got me into astrology. And I think for me that was around like, what, 2008, 2009, somewhere there for me. Um, yeah, that, that was a tough time. And I remember being at work and somebody said to me, uh, this sounds like I was describing some of the things I was going through because I had things come in left, right and center, just chaos and turmoil and all sorts of problems. It wasn't, I look back now and I'm like, Duh, it wasn't a big deal. But back then, of course, I was younger and at the time everything was a big deal. So a friend of mine at work, he was in his 50s, he said to me, what you're describing sounds like a Saturn return. And he said, you might want to check that out. You might want to Google search that term. And that's when I got really deep into astrology because not only did I Google search that term, I started reading books and books and getting into it and for my own personal self. I wasn't reading for others at that time. Uh, and I remember consulting a Western astrologer and all kinds of things are happening. So it was really very fascinating. Now, this is a Pluto natal return. With the Saturn natal return, I know that what was happening to me personally was that Saturn was <clears throat> had done one revolution and was checking basically all the things I'd ever done since I was born. And you look at this, Pluto is going to be checking all the things that you, the United States has ever done since it was born. This is a very karmic time for the United States. 
if we click up and we bring you know um, Pluto into this house and I'll show you this actually I'll just take a screenshot now and I'll show you some of these screenshots basically we've got Pluto coming up to meet natal Pluto so there's gonna be all kinds of tension there and I think that um, yeah I've got the note here Pluto approaches natal Pluto next four years at least are going to be tough right uh, till at least 2025 there's going to be it's, it's it's there's going to be tension it's going to be tough it's going to be difficult regardless of who wins the election doesn't matter who wins the election it's this is when it's Pluto it's beyond that it's you know there's going to be um, all manner of, of, of tension and problems the other thing that just struck me in such a big way with the United States chart I mean it just couldn't be more obvious the first thing I saw when I looked at it was oh my god America's in Saudi Saudi right I mean hello that's major that's big that's 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 and it's not a good time it's not Saudi Saudi is not a good time and I have to be careful how I phrase this because I don't want you out there to think oh no my Saudi Saudi is coming is it going to be a bad time for me probably not just about all of you who come and watch my channel you're good people you know um, you're, you're, you're into astrology you're into self-development you're into improving your life you care about others you have so many wonderful qualities that I can't even begin to tell you now Saturn loves people like you and I would imagine Pluto also loves people like you if you're up for a Pluto natal return well well actually you wouldn't be <laughs> but, sorry I just realized but um, but Saudi Saudi period is something that people in India fear. It's known as a bad time. And it's a bad time for those who've done bad things. Okay? It's not a bad time for so any of you who's coming to me for a consultation. I know that you are already of a certain level. You are already of a certain place where Saudi Saudi is probably going to even be profitable for you I have seen that a lot I'm studying the chart of Jim Henson right now and Saudi Saudi was an amazing time yes it was marked by the death of his brother it was deeply sad at the start he did have to suffer he did have pain I think everyone's got something to deal with during their Saudi Saudi period but it was also a time when he got married it was also a time when he strategized the next 10 years of his life and laid a lot of big foundations that created such a beautiful life for him I'm going to do a master's episode on him that's why I'm studying him um, and I want to study Americans right now because I, I feel like sort of American souls that are past it, they are also wanting to come through to give their love to America because it's a tough time. It's going to be a tough time for America. So on two fronts, on the Pluto natal return and on the Saudi Saudi front. Um, Saturn, of course, entered Saudi Saudi period when Saturn transitioned from Sagittarius to Capricorn in Feb of this year, right? So it's just the beginning. And I really think the next five years are going to be tough for America, uh, definitely on the count of Saudi Saudi, combined with Pluto natal return. Th this next five years is going to be tough. That is for sure. And I can say that because um, here's an example of a Saudi Saudi that went badly for someone. Fred the Shred, famous city banker, right? He was an English banker who, when Saturn was transiting 11th from his moon, he made the bank millions and millions and millions. He, it was like he was riding high, kind of like how Bill Gates is riding high right now. Similar thing, right? So, it, and it's interesting, why, why are these people allowed to get away with so much? It seems that way. But it's like Fred the Shred anyway was being propped up in that 11th from the moon transit and the universe just slammed him down in Saudi Saudi period like wow did he get rinsed okay so it's like this is the karmas of a country that we're dealing with here and you know we're gonna have um, the other thing that we've got in this house here is Ketu and Pluto are in natal Ketu and natal Pluto are in the same house so Boy, is this a karmic time. All the, the karmas and the old stuff is going to be assessed, is going to be checked by the planets. The planets do not miss anything. They don't miss anything. If there have been crimes, if there have been bad things, there's payments have to be made, right? The, the cosmic banking system is uh, extraordinarily precise. 
all I'm doing through astrology is I'm just trying to understand and touch that cosmic banking system and understand it. I'm just trying to be with God, you know, and that's, I, I'm like close. I'm able to read some little symbols and whatever, but honestly, the system is overwhelmingly huge. The design is, it's nature, it's perfect, right? So, I mean, we're in the hands of the gods. We're in the hands of the planets. That's all I can say there. Um, let's have a look. The other thing I wanted to take a look at very quickly was the chart of Donald Trump. I thought, let's take a look at him. Let's just check in with him, see what's going on there. A couple of quick things to say. Um, how do I think his chart is faring in terms of the election that's coming up? I think it's looking pretty strong, if you ask me. I think his chart looks... Good. And again, I'm just going to use the simplest of all techniques. I'm going to look at Saturn from the moon, right? He was inside his happy period for these last seven odd years. Oh, by the way, back to the United States, Saturn is happy period. It lasts for about seven years, seven, seven and a half years. Um, so exactly seven and a half years. So if we're looking from now, it's about seven years, right? Um, so the next five years, I can definitely say for the United States, really tough. I think things will start to ease off when Saturn moves into Pisces. And then I think when Saturn goes into Aries, I think that's gonna be a great time for the whole world. And yes, I should add some positivity here, shouldn't I? Because otherwise it's very depressing. Um, another thing, and I think I've said this in, in other videos that when Saturn, so right now, this is gonna be the worst sector of the three, I think. I think this is actually gonna be the worst. Um, when Saturn moves into Aquarius, it's going to be about the people and the people are going to be tested and we need people to stand up and protest and it's happening it's happening the the rumblings of that are happening right now and I'll put up on the screen some quotes of from people that I've read um, on YouTube so you can see the things that people out there are saying right you can see that the the people are strong, the collective is strong. And I think that consciousness wise, there is enough people to combat uh, any evil forces on the planet. And I think, again, could this just be a divine setup so that you know the, the people who really are into doing wrong things can then be punished? Because if it's, if it's just in their minds, it's like they have to do something for then the divine to be able to sort things out. And that's kind of what I'm thinking at the moment. So I think this next two years is going to be tough and it isn't going to be good. Um, and then, of course, when Saturn moves into Aquarius, which is going to happen, let me just click up there and I'll put a screenshot of this. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like May. Oh, no, that's there's a little retrograde happening there. So it's going to be, we're looking at sort of Jan, Feb 2023 for 2.5 years. That is going to be tough. But the focus is going to be on the people and it's going to be the quality of our rebellion that counts. Okay. Do we stand up? Do we say no? Do we, what do we do? Right. That is what's going to be examined at that point. All right. So, and then after that, we've got Saturn moving into Pisces, which I think is going to be a better 2.5 year sector. And then I think when Saturn leaves there and goes into Aries, that's going to be a time where we're really building the new earth. We're rebuilding. Everything's going to be very very good i feel like there's going to be a renaissance there's going to be those are going to be good 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 times so now that is happening and let me just click up to that that's some years away but it's going to be great and look some people think that's far away to wait we're looking at kind of feb 2028 onwards i tend to think things are going to be really good so it's this decade is kind of like a rebuilding we start at the bottom and we're going to rebuild and it's really interesting on that front I was given um, a diagram by a friend of mine. It was a prediction of the um, property prices. And it showed that exact line that things are here now, but things are gonna go like this. I was just Googling some other um, financial predictions. And again, I saw people predicting that, yeah, this, this decade, things are gonna be being built again. Um, but I was reading that you know the 30s and 40s are going to be much better, and that's that's definitely what I'm seeing here. So if you're interested in that, we can do a video on that. I'd have to study up on it a bit more. But those are my early thoughts. Um, the other chart I wanted to talk you through was that of Donald Trump. We we're running out of time, but I'll be very quick. I don't have too much to say here. Just to say that his chart is looking strong to me. 
um, we've got Saturn third from the moon. So yeah, this whole time he's been in Sadisati, which I've been observing that and I'm just going, wow, he's okay, he's, he's doing all right with that. Um, Saturn is third from his moon, so Saturn is looking to help him right now. The other thing to note that third from the moon, this was incredible. When I saw this, I was like, sixth from the ascendant. Well, hello, that's, I mean, you just don't get better than that. So Saturn, although Saturn is not one of the strongest players in his natal chart, it's actually a weaker um, player in his chart. It's strong by transit. It's very strong. So that looked interesting to me. And then the other thing that was very interesting to me, which I would have to study on, and I'm not comfortable to make a call exactly what this means, but I can tell you that there's going to be some kind of extraordinary change, transition. Um, and I know what people are saying in the media, they're saying that the election might be delayed. Yeah, it might be. They're experimenting that in New Zealand right now. I do tend to think that these quieter nations like Australia and New Zealand are being used as tests for um, things that they're going to want to roll out in the United States in winter. Okay, so what they're doing in Melbourne right now, I get the sense that, which is craziness, right? It's basically, you know, it's just crazy, <laughs> the rules. I feel like they're using Melbourne as a little test case and they're using New Zealand as a test that they're delaying the election there. I think they are underestimating the spirit of the American people. And I think they're not factoring that in. And I think it's, you can't use these countries as a test for then what's gonna happen in America. I think the United States and England as well, you got people with a lot of soul, a lot of spirit, a lot of um, love for the nation, you know, I think they, can, they might try some things that they seem to think have worked well in these two small countries. I don't think uh, that's, I, I don't think these tests that they're doing here are going to help anyway. But let's take a look at this. So from his moon, we've got Mars fifth from the moon, which is good. That's not a bad placement, but it's eighth from the ascendant. That, this is interesting. That's going to be major change and upheaval in terms of career, right? Eighth from, eighth from transit, uh, I've seen that. I've experienced it myself. Changing career, definitely. And then you've got nodal return, Rahu Ketu axis, nodal return. So it's kind of like, and that's running, you've got Rahu there, 7th from Moon, 10th from Ascendant, Rahu, in this position. I'm not exactly sure how to read this, but it's kind of some kind of major transformation, transition, and it is career related. So though the chart is looking strong for a win, something is going to happen. And I know that in the press they're currently saying things like the election could be delayed, this or that. There's a lot of speculation. Um, again, we might. This might be something we do another video on later, depending on how the views go uh, for this video. So I'm going to leave you with that. Before I leave you with that, I did just want to say that if you're in America right now, I've got a couple of notes here. If you're in the United States, and a lot of my viewers are, a lot of my clients are. I have one of you, one of my regular clients who's in New York. My hat goes off to her. I think she's so courageous. She's there, you know, building her career, doing her thing. Um, there are many of you who are there. And I wanted to say that if you're in America right now, you have got a ticket to the greatest show. You've got, you've got a front row seat to the greatest show in the entire universe. Okay, so don't think that, you know, oh, a lot of people are kind of thinking, oh, I, I wish I could move to New Zealand or I wish I could move here or there. Or, no, 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 no. Being there is just, wow, you're in the heart of it. You're in the heart of, like, the big thing that's going on. It's incredible. So that is something amazing. It's real history-making time. If you're there, that's incredible. 
Um, and I wanted to say as well, be peaceful as much as possible. Your high vibration is going to lift everyone else. And the other thing is, and this is quite radical advice. Oh dear, I've got a bit of a sniffle. Sorry, I'm just going to blow my nose. <laughs> it's nothing to worry about. You're not going to catch anything. It's just a sniffle. I'm one of those people who sniffles all the time. I don't do it in public anymore. Oh gosh, freak everyone out. I'm so lucky in Australia, I haven't needed to wear a mask. I'm very lucky. Um, but anyway, got the note here. But if you have to wear one, honestly, to do your day, because there are rules in that, do it, right? Just do what, what you have to do. I've got the note here, be peaceful. And here's some revolutionary advice right here. Be happy, okay? <laughs> that is weird advice, but it's like sometimes when the collective is really down and people are down and people are depressed and losing their jobs and ill and in hospital and bad problems and all the bad things are going on and it can feel like I'm not allowed to be happy or I shouldn't be too happy, everybody else is having a bad time. You don't have to flaunt it, you don't have to show it off to everyone or something, but like please be happy like if you can if you are happy and you can do that somewhere privately please do because that will keep the vibration of everybody high and that's so important right now more than ever we've all got to um, just our being is purposeful in itself okay it's it's massively purposeful sometimes we go through life and I know I have a lot of clients come to me they're sort of saying oh my career is at a standstill or this isn't going right or, or this or that or, and we think that our lives are purposeless and meaningless and all this kind of thing. Right now every single life on the planet and especially every single life that's either being peaceful or even doing the wonderful thing of being happy, you are lifting the vibration for all of us. So please um, keep doing that. And, you know, as I say, you don't have to flaunt it. You don't have to show it off or something if it's going to offend somebody around you. But, I mean, we need more than ever um, just, just that. The Dalai Lama once said, uh, and I'm pretty sure I'm quoting this correctly, he said something like, the world doesn't need more accountants. The world doesn't need more um, bankers and mathematicians. Well, mathematicians, that's quite good actually, but um, it, it doesn't need more bankers or more corporate people. The Dalai Lama said the world needs more storytellers, the world needs more poets and dreamers and artists and astrologers. He may not have said astrologers, but I'm throwing that in there. Um, and, you know, bakers and sewers and people who play ball in the yard or whatever, right? That's what the world needs more of. And it's very true. So I'm going to leave it there because the card's going to run out anyway. But I um, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. Um, please subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.